Welcome to Digitizing Cross Stitch. Before we jump into the lesson, I just want to tell you what's happening on the screen. When I left click on my mouse around the cursor, you should see, be seeing a red ring. When I right click, you should be seeing a blue ring. And there should always be a yellow halo around where the pointer is on the cursor. So now let's jump into this and see what we can do with cross stitch. To get into the cross stitch portion of the software, you have to first open your Artista software, and then there are two ways to get into the software. You can either click on the cross stitch icon, or you can go up and click on File, and then go to cross stitch in the File menu. We'll think a minute, and then it will open another screen. And this is the cross stitch portion of the program. You have to keep both the Bernina software and the cross stitch windows open in order to work in the cross stitch. It is not a standalone program. To the best of my knowledge, nothing has changed in the cross stitch portion of the program since at least version 3 of the software. That's the first version I had. Um, there are two viewing windows in the cross stitch program. There is the picture window, which works very similar to the picture view in the main part of the software, only there are fewer options here. You have select picture, you have load picture, scan picture, dim picture, and save picture and we'll work with some of that later. We go into design view there are some icons that are different and we will work our way through them. The first one we're going to look at is the grid icon. You can turn the grid off and on just like you can in the main software by clicking on the icon. It's gone click to bring it back and we can set our grid up to if you right click on the grid you get this dialog box you can show the grid which does exactly the same thing as clicking it on and off show major lines most commercial cross stitch patterns come with bold lines usually around every 10 by 10 block um, if your pattern has a different setting, you can change it here, the major grid spacing. It could be 20, whatever. I'm going to leave it at 10. You can also change your grid line colors if there's something that's easier for you to see. Let's just do red for the fun of it. I'm going to leave the minor lines as gray. Um, we check the other tabs, they work pretty much the same as the stuff in the um, Artista software. We can change our background color. Right now it's gray. You can choose any other color if you want to. I'm going to leave it as gray. You can actually bring fabric in. You can decide which hoop you want to use here. You can do it up here on the hoop tab too. I'm going to say, go back to the grid tab. That's my settings. I'm going to say OK. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the icons that work exactly the same way as they do in the other software. You have the hoop icon where you can show or hide the hoop. You can right click it and choose your hoop. Um, the picture icon is to show or hide your picture, just like it is in the main part of the software. Um, this icon is different. There are two ways to view your design in the cross stitch portion of the program. You can either view it as crosses or you can view it as solid blocks. And to show you the difference, let's open a cross stitch design. Now, before we start digitizing, I want to talk about the different types of stitches we have in this program. I'm going to put my grid back on, and I'm going to zoom in so we can see. Um, we have two options for outline stitches. So if we click on outline, we have either the single or the current cross stitch type. If we ha use the single, 
And let's just use the pencil. No, it's selecting right now. Escape, pencil. See, I can click and just drag, or I can do individual ones. But it just does an outline, and it only goes outside the box or diagonally through it. If we use the current cross stitch type, and this time let's outline with a rectangle, then I can drag my rectangle and it, it uses whatever is selected right now, it's full cross, so it outlines with that whichever tool I'm using. All right, let's get rid of all of it. Undo, undo, can do it here, there's that. Now we have several different options when it comes to the cross stitch. If we click on that, these are our options. Doesn't, I can resize my box. Doesn't really change anything. I already showed you the full cross, but let's use it again. Let's use the open curve tool and enter. Um, let's switch to the three quarter cross. And if I use my pencil, I can do it in individual boxes. And the three-quarter cross, depending on where you click in the box, determines which direction it's turned. And you may have to play with that some. Okay. And then we have the half cross. And again, which way you click, which corner of the box, like if I click in the upper left-hand corner, it's going diagonally from upper left to lower right. If I click in the upper right-hand corner, it's upper right-hand to lower left. If I click in the lower right-hand, it's exactly the same way as the first one. And if I click in the lower left-hand, then I get that. Okay, our next option is a quarter cross, and it's, again, it's wherever you're clicking in the grid. And then the mini cross. Let's do the rectangle again. Now let's just fill up. Okay, and here, if you look closely, there are actually four cross stitches in each grid, so it is a fourth the size of the full cross. Um, our next one is the upright cross. Oops. Let's just use the closed curve tool. It's the same as the closed object tool. It's filling in whatever I outlined. <clears throat> the here you see, rather than going from corner to corner, it's going from the upper center to lower center, center left to center right. Let's escape. Let's just there's just a single one and the next option is the double cross I'm gonna use the pencil again and there you have it here's just one of them looks something like a snowflake it's just it's crossed both diagonally and vertically and horizontally And then we have the elongated vertical cross. And you don't have to fill the box, which is 
new to me. I just discovered that. You can do just depending on which side you click on is which side the cross goes into. But you're getting two tall crosses in each box if you fill the box. And we have the same thing just going going horizontal. And then our last choice, nope, yes, our last choice, apparently, is the French knot. There it is. So those are all the stitch types. Um, let's get rid of all of this. Select all and delete on my keyboard. Um, you can keep the thread colors open on the screen by oops, just clicking and dragging it up there, I think. Let's make sure. Let's, no, by right clicking it, now it should stay there even while we're working. Yep, it does. You can do the same thing with your stitch types. Right click it, whoops, and bring it up so that you can switch back and forth without having to come down here and keep switching back, keep opening the, the boxes. Now let's get rid of that again. Control A selects everything and delete. I came across something that was new to me. It was probably here before, but I just never noticed it. Um, I'm going to play with colors and the different types of stitches here, and I think you will get the idea as we go along rather than trying to put it all into words right now. Um, the full cross can be one color in the square. We can switch to the three-quarter cross, and it also is one color but we can add a, a quarter cross to it to finish the cross and that quarter cross can be another color so you could have two colors in a square with that um, the half cross can be one color going one direction and a second color going the other and then the quarter cross we can actually get four different colors in the square with that if we want to And the same with the mini cross. You can have four colors with that. Um, here. This one will only do one color, obviously. And so will this one. The elongated, you can do two colors in a block. Same with the elongated horizontal. And then, of course, the French knot is just one color again. Uh, but that means you can have more detailed designs. If you were digitizing a complex design and you were part way through it and saw you missed something or you wanted to change something or you had lots of colors in the design and you were trying to figure out what one of them was, you can just scroll your mouse over wherever it is you want to know and it will tell you what the stitch type is and what color was used. Um, now I'm going to show you where I got my sample chart. Um, I'm not putting it on this CD because I downloaded it from the DMC website and it is copyrighted so you will need to go get your own copy of it. 
to get the chart I'm using in this CD, I went into my web browser and I happen to use Yahoo for my search engine. You are welcome to use whatever search engine you want. But to look for charts, I did a search for free cross stitch designs. And the first one that came up was DMC. And there's one that's simple enough to use. So I clicked on that. And when the DMC page opens, Um, there are choices based on their different types of floss. I chose the cotton embroidery floss since that's the one I usually use if I'm working by hand. And then there's a whole page of designs that are free that open up here. Now I looked for one that was simple in the interest of time for this lesson. So I chose the Gold Star America. I clicked on it and a new window opens with a chart on it. If you go down to page two, it actually has the colors, and these are the colors that I input earlier. And it tells you what size the design would be, tells you how big the grid is, it tells you what count they used. You don't have to use that count, obviously. But what we want right now is just the chart. So, somehow we need to be able to bring that into our software as a picture file because right now this is a PDF file. Every computer has a way to do a print screen. That means it captures a picture of the screen. Somewhere on your keyboard there's going to be a key that says print screen. Mine it's abbreviated to PRNT space SCRN and keyboards vary so I can't tell you exactly where it is. You may have to use a shift key or a function key to activate it, it, you'll be able to tell that by what color it is printed on the key. And for instance, on my keyboard, anything that takes a function key with it is printed in blue. My keyboard takes a shift plus the print screen button. And I just did it. You didn't see anything happen. It looks like nothing happened. But what it did was take a picture of the whole screen and it put it on the clipboard. So now we need to open that picture in some photo software, not photo software, picture software. And since all computers that come with Windows also have paint, we're going to use that. So to get to it, you would click on your start icon down in the lower left of the corner, corner of the screen, which you're not going to see because I am limited on how much I can record. record. So I click on start. And then I say all programs, and I choose accessories, and then paint is there, and it will open. And now that I'm in it, I can paste my picture into paint. So I say edit, paste, and there it is. And now you can see the whole background of my computer in there. It takes the whole screen. But all we're interested in is just this part right here. So... Make sure the select icon is on, and here's when you're going to want to be very picky on what you're selecting. I want to get it as close to just on the edge of that as I possibly can. And release. And now it's selected, so I can go up and say edit, cut, and I'm ready for a new page. File, new. No, I don't need to save my screen print anymore. Now, yours may or may not open to the same size as what we just cut. And I'm going to show you what happens if it doesn't. There, I made it bigger now than what I cut out. I can now paste, edit, paste, and it pastes it into this corner. Now, if yours looks like this, you are going to want to click on the white square because we want to drag it back down so all we have is just that chart. That looks pretty good. Normal size. 
So now we need to save it and give it a name. File, save as, and you can put it wherever you want. For me right now, I'm going to put it on my desktop so I can find it easy. Cross stitch American Heart. And the software can read a bitmap, I believe, so we're going to leave it as a bitmap and say save. So we are finished with paint now. Now, before we start digitizing, I just want to mention, if you are using a chart that was printed and you're scanning it into your computer, you want to scan it as straight as you possibly can. I was hoping I could show you how to rotate it in paint, but paint only does it in fixed numbers every 45 degrees, I believe. So I have opened the same chart in Adobe Photoshop version 5, a limited edition that came with one of my digital cameras. And if you look now, the chart is crooked on the screen. In Photoshop, you can rotate an image by individual degrees if you want to. So if I select it, I say image, rotate canvas, and now I have my choice of 180 or 90 degrees clockwise or 90 deg degrees counterclockwise. I can go arbitrary, <clears throat> and it should come up zero to start with. I've been playing with it before I started recording. I can rotate it either counterclockwise either clockwise or counterclockwise and I can go in one degree angles if I want to. If I say one and say OK, except for I think I went the wrong way. Take canvas, yeah I had it on counterclockwise so if I say clockwise I know I just rotated it one degree so let's do two and see what happens. OK um, it's getting close, but if I want to see how straight it is, I can drag my box up, and it's still a little bit off. Image, rotate canvas, arbitrary, let's try one degree this time, okay. And now it looks pretty straight. And if you have Photoshop, you could do your cropping right here. You do not have to do it in paint so I could select it just like we did in paint and I could say image crop and it's a little bit off here I would want to get in here and really fuss with it I want to get it as close to on those lines as I possibly can and I will show you why in just a minute I'm not going to see I came across something that was new to me. It was probably here before, but I just never noticed it. Um, I'm going to play with colors and the different types of stitches here, and I think you will get the idea as we go along rather than trying to put it all into words right now. Um, the full cross can be one color in the square. We can switch to the three-quarter cross, and it also is one color but we can add a, a quarter cross to it to finish the cross and that quarter cross can be another color so you can have two colors in a square with that. Um, the half cross can be one color going one direction and a second color going the other and then the quarter cross we can actually get four different colors in the square with that if we want to And the same with the mini cross. You can have four colors with that. Um, here. This one will only do one color, obviously. And so will this one. The elongated, you can do two colors in a block. Same with the elongated horizontal. Uh, 
And then, of course, the French knot is just one color again. Uh, but that means you can have more detailed designs. Now we're back in the cross stitch software and we are ready to load our chart into the software. You need to go to the picture tab and the load picture icon. Remember I saved it on the desktop. Wherever you saved it, you need to find it. So desktop and then I need to find where it is and notice I have all graphics so it will show any graphics files I have in this folder. Um, we want the cross stitch American Heart. Click open. Alright, now I want to zoom in on this and I need to see how big that chart is. How many squares across by how many squares high. Let's hide the grid so we can see it easier and now we need to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I know my my heavy lines are ten wide, so there's another ten. So that's twenty-one. And I'm going to write it down so I don't forget. And then going down, this is heavy line, so this should be ten. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six more. So that's sixteen high. Now let's put our grid back. The picture needs to be selected, so click on the select picture icon and then click on the picture. And now, while it's selected, right click on it and the bitmap properties dialog box opens. And you see here where it's asking what the dimensions are. That's asking how many crosses it is wide and how many it is high. And since we've counted the, gra the, um, the graph, then we know that. Our width was 21 and our height was 16. Now if you weren't able to straighten your, your graphic in another program, you could play with it here. I just find it easier to do it, out, do it outside of the software. But that's all we're going to play with in here right now, so click OK. Now notice how my grid lines up pretty well now with my chart that is behind it. That makes it much easier to work on it. So now we're ready to digitize so we can click on the design view. And it looks like everything in this design is a full cross so I'm going to select full cross and I don't really need to keep it up there. I'm going to right click and bring this up so I can switch back and forth. Um, if I refer back to my chart, I know that all the triangles are white. So let's choose white as my first one. And let's just play around a little bit with the diff some of the different tools. Let's do the rectangle. I can go from here to here and all of them are white. I think I'm going to switch to, no, not with the white. And then I can use the open curve tool and digitize a line from here to here. Enter, and it fills all those. And the pencil is great for doing individual ones. Okay, I can just use the pencil and drag too on this simple of a design. That's probably the easiest to do, but I wanted you to see different tools. Um, I still have some up here, so let's do the rectangle. Oops. I'm going to do both ends and the pencil again. And I believe that's all of the white. Let's do the royal blue next, which is these filled in ovals. Um, really no good place on here to show you the area fill. I'll do it separately. Let's do the um, can do the open curve I could have done the cl no I don't want the close because it would have filled everything. Enter. 
Um, and then I can use the pencil to fill in the last ones. Remember I said I like to use the solids to see if I had any holes and now I can look and there isn't any symbol for either of those colors out there that's not filled in so I'm good. So now we can switch to our next color, the red. And my chart tells me that red is supposed to be where there are empty horizontal ovals. So, do this. That's okay, we'll come back and pick that up. So what if I actually came here and got too many? I don't have to undo it. There's an eraser tool. I can click, 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 click. Actually, the pencil tool will do the right, the same thing. You can right click instead of left clicking and it erases. Enter. And pencil. Oops. Undo. I got into the white there. Okay, let's check it again. See, I missed a couple right here, and it was hard to see when it was, I can digitize with the solid too. And the last color that's in cross stitches is the gold, which it doesn't look like gold with the software stuff. Okay. So let's go back to viewing as crosses. Let's hide the picture. Say one to one. I didn't ever adjust my size, so it's whatever I already had. Settings, fabric count, it's on 10 right now. If you remember, the chart had it at 6. So say update. Okay, let's see one to one. That's 6. Um, we still need to do our outlines. So let's put the picture back. The chart actually shows that outlining has been done in two colors on this. As far as I can tell, um, it's just around the star that they used the royal blue and the rest of it was in black. I'm going to zoom in again. And I'm going to do the outline. We don't want it to be crossed. We want single. And the royal blue. And... Let's try the open curve. Oh, actually, it should have been a closed curve. Doesn't matter. Enter. And let's hide the picture again. didn't do the whole thing. Undo. We could do this without the picture. Sometimes it's hard to click exactly where you want it, so maybe you want to use the pencil instead. And that wasn't where we wanted it. Here. I'm hoping you can see that it's that's not where we wanted it. So let's right click with the mouse and undo. And you don't have to do individual. You can just keep holding down the left mouse button and dragging. And there's the outlining in the royal blue. And then the rest of it is outlined in black. Let's bring the picture back. Um, the whole heart is outlined, and then there's outlining between the stripes. Let's try the closed curve tool again, just to see if we can.
use the back space, same as you can in the regular software, enter. And see, it didn't get it right again. So I prefer using the pencil. Well, let's try it again. Nope. I didn't like that. Turn the volume down on the keyboard so you don't have to hear that plunking. I'm going to on purpose miss a spot. Um, the software doesn't care when you put it in. It's going to sort it by color and the best path. At least it does on the crosses. I could be wrong on the outline. But the crosses, it will automatically sort it and do all of one color and then come back and do the next. It's really hard to see on some of the horizontal ones that anything's actually happening. Let's hide the picture. And here, it's not real obvious, but there's the one I missed, so I can just go back and put that in. And then I am ready to do my ones that go straight across. There's that one. Let's try the open curve from there to there and press enter. That worked, but that wasn't where I wanted it. Undo. It's actually between the colors. I can bring the picture back if I want to. It's just easier to see right now without it since this is such a simple design. Enter. See if we can get this one to go where we want. Enter. Ha, it worked. Enter. Enter. And enter. Let's look at it. There it is, as a solid block. So I think I have it all. Let's go back to crosses, one to one. Now this is a very simple line, but if you were to this point and you needed to edit some things, you're looking at it and saying, okay, my outlines are all right, so I don't want anything to move there. You can lock either your outlines or your cross stitch, and to do that you go edit, and if you want it locked, you take the check mark out of that spot. So see there's no check mark there now. So I could come in here and select part of my cross stitches and maybe I want to move them. Maybe this goes over here. Notice nothing happened to my outlines. We can do exactly the same thing with the cross stitches. Let's put the check back in the outline and take it out of the crosses. Now Perhaps I'm looking at this outline and I drag my thing around it. Whoops. And I move the outline. I can undo, edit, put the check mark back in there. That's just there if you need it. You probably don't on this simple of a design. Once you're sure you're finished with the design, then switch back to the picture view. Click on the select, and click on the picture, and then delete it. I only need to go back into the design, say File, Save As. Cross stitch designs can only be saved as ARX designs. And you're going to, even when you bring it into your main software to stitch out, you still will want to save a copy of the ARX if you ever want to bring it back into the cross-stitch software to resize or whatever. 
So let's name this um, Patriotic Heart. And I want it in my designs or I'll never find it. Software Club Boulder. Okay, it's saved. Just for fun, let's go ahead and look at it over in the Bernina software. So I'm in the Bernina software file, open, and rather than having to hunt through all the art files that I have, I'm going to switch my file type to the cross stitch files, the ARX. And I know that it was in my computer, C drive, my designs, and I have my software club folder. And there are two in here, one that I digitized for somebody else. Let's open it. Okay, let's look at it one to one. And now let's take it into artistic view. And that's what it would look like with the six count. So Maybe that's too big and too open for what we want to do, so let's close it. Go back into the cross stitch, and let's change it. Settings, fabric count, let's change it to a 14 count. Okay, one to one, file, save as, periodic 14 count, save. Now if I go back into the Bernina software, open, and here's my 14 count, open, one to one, and that's what it would look like in the 14 count. Notice art designs do not come in, I mean cross stitch designs do not come in as grade A art designs, don't know why, but they don't, maybe just because that part of the software is so much older than the rest of it. Okay, back to playing with the cross stitch part. We can close this window and close this window. For me, I see myself digitizing commercially available charts more than anything else, but there are several other things that we can do in cross stitch, so let's take a look at them. First, let's look at some of the tools that we haven't really played with yet. Um, why don't you go ahead and get a new window. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Um, let's choose outline as our stitch type and use current cross. And we have the full cross as our cross stitch type. Then let's choose the rectangle tool and digitize a rectangle on the screen. Okay. Now we have an outline that's made out of cross stitches. Next, let's choose the cross as our cross stitch type and then whatever type you want. Just for fun, I'm going to do the little one. And let's change colors. And this time, Let's click on the um, area fill icon. Sorry, I have to think. I don't use this part of the software enough to remember the names of the icons. The area fill icon, which looks like a paint bucket. And now let's click in the middle of our rectangle. Yep, we want that fill type. Now let's change the color, though. I should have done that first. Undo, just so we didn't have to do it afterwards. Mini cross. Okay. Why didn't it change? Undo. Let's take a look at our settings, thread colors. Okay. Oh, maybe because we're using. Uh... All right. I think it was still showing my thread palette from a previous design and it wasn't one we were actually using so it wasn't activating anything. Let's change our color. Use the fill area fill icon. 
okay and now it's filled the whole thing in with little cross stitches in another color so any shape we did it would do the same thing let's try it with the circle oval we need to digitize our center point and enter whoops okay there's the circle if we were doing it as a fill undo I didn't intend to do that I wanted the outline what if we did the single and our circle and this is cross stitch so circles are far from perfect now let's say we want fill and let's do the elongated vertical let's change to red and the fill area okay so it does not work with outlines it has to be crosses let's just use the erase or not <clears throat> we can do select and delete so go back to outline current cross type let's do this and try this again nope forgot to change see I have to play with this too outline is what we want not fill enter what if we wanted to outline again I don't know where my center was exactly so right about here okay and then now we could switch to fill let's do the elongated and let's change to yellow okay so those are some of the tools we haven't played with so far did you notice that little dialog box popping up when we were filling something it does have a purpose other than adding one more step so let's go ahead and do an outline current cross type and use the rectangle and then let's switch to the fill and let's do the mini cross and let's change the color and use the area fill now this pops up and I can say which corner or corners I want to be filled with that mini fill because remember you click on whichever corner you want filled so now it actually looks like an offset cross let's undo that what if we did our elongated and put that in okay and now we have kind of a zigzag effect going undo how about this and click and we can go okay we cannot put in more than just the quarter so we get kind of a dash thing and you have a lot of jump stitches with that one we could do the three quarter and you can decide which direction you want it facing I can't leave well enough alone so since I discovered I can have more than one color in a square I was wondering if I could have multiple colors and multiple stitch types with the area fill and I did feel, find one combination that works the rest of them really don't and I will show you the, the one that works you have to start with the quarter cross and whatever color you want and the area fill choose which corner you want it going into okay and then I can add the three quarter to that change the color 
And the reason it's working is because the inside is still all open. It, 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 nothing is connected all the way through to close it. And let's turn it this way. Okay, so there I have a two color fill. If I try it with the others, what happens is the fill stitch actually closes it into sections and it will only fill those individual sections. I'll show you what I mean. If I try it with the half cross, okay. Now let's change colors and try the half cross going the other way. This way, okay. All it filled was just the one square that I clicked on. So it will work with the quarter. It would probably work with two quarter crosses, but I think after you got two, you would be out of luck. Let's try it. Okay, and then let's change our color. Let's put it this way, okay. Cool zigzag. Once we go to our third one though, I think we're back to doing individual squares. it will do the whole row. So another thing to play with, I don't know where I, whether I would use it or not, but it's fun to know it's there. Just for fun, let's go back and look at that rectangle again. I haven't talked about the auto select icon yet. That is this one that looks like a closed curve tool with a select icon on it. Click on that. And then come over and click on the outline of our rectangle. It puts dotted lines around all those stitches so they're all selected and now I can change my color. I can do the same thing for the center. So that's just a quick way to select a whole bunch of stuff. Next we're going to do the rubber stamp tool. So I'm going to close this and get a new page. The first thing you want to do is just digitize a quick little motif, anything you want. So I think I will do a little flower just for kicks. This whoops, pencil. Put that in the center. Do that. Um, Let's do outline, green, wrong way, yeah, that's too far, and let's go across, how about trying a three quarter? Or actually, let's do the full cross first. And then do the quarter. No, don't like that. Okay, that's okay. So I have my little motif. Whatever you want. doesn't have to be a flower. Okay, now once you have the little motif, now we need to select it. And you can use either the select object and drag a box around it. Or if you had a fussier shape, you could use the um, polygon select. I mean, we can do that here if we want to kind of a waste on something this small. But. So I select it and once it's selected the rubber stamp icon lights up. So I can click on that and now it's attached to my cursor and I can click wherever I want it. So I can make a whole border of these little cross stitch flowers until I've had enough and then I can press escape and it's gone. We can do lettering in cross stitch also. Let's get a new page. Click 
click on the um, lettering values icon. Actually, if you want to choose your font, you need to right click on it. And then you get to choose your fonts, and it's using the true type fonts out of your computer. So some of them are good, some of them aren't. You really just have to play with it to see. Um, I think I'll just try Arial. And notice it defaulted to 58. You get too small and you're just going to have little X's. Okay. And now we just put our mouse button wherever we want and type in our text and then enter. And you see it was small enough that it is very blobby on my A's and stuff. So let's undo. Try it again. This time let's try it with all caps. Enter. Still is. So it really is trial and error until you get something you like. One to one. Maybe that's why because it's so small. Let's delete it. Let's go in here. Let's try 72. Okay. Oops. Undo. It still is not fantastic, but that's the way lettering works. We can also auto digitize in cross stitch. Um, let's get a new page, and we need to go to the picture view and click on the load picture icon. It needs to be a graphic that is clean, so the ones you know will work best are the ones that came with the software. So click on the artwork folder in my designs and your um, files of type may be on ARX right now you'll need to either go to all files or if the option is there all, all graphics um, you can go by name if you want but up here if the view menu you can switch to thumbnails and pick whatever you want let's try this one just for kicks and now is a size time to resize your graphic if you want it bigger and you can just drag on the handlebars just like you do in the regular software okay now we go over to design view and once we have a graphic, then this icon like lights up. It's called Auto Stitch. So if I click on it, now I have to click on the picture. It doesn't tell me that. And we can choose our thread palette if we want to, what thread chart you want. Um, doesn't really matter. We'll just do that just for fun. I can have unlimited colors or I can restrict it to a certain number of colors. It has mapped the image as only six colors, so I'm going to just leave it. And unless I want that white background digitized, I need to put a check mark in the omit background. Now I say OK. It didn't even take hardly any time. Let's hide the picture. Let's view one to one. Let's hide this. And there is a cross stitch design all ready to go. It actually doesn't look too bad. Let's put that back, put that back. All right, um, we could load a new page, but I'm going to just go ahead and use the same picture to show you another way to auto digitize. So just do undo so the stitches are all gone. If you prefer, you can auto digitize different sections at a time and to do that click on the magic wand and now you can choose whatever type of stitches you want so say we want the mini and let's do this red here in the boot okay alright it digitizes everything that's in that color so all of my red 
has just become many cross stitches. What if, and I'm just playing here, okay, I select that and I want to go, okay, I can change it. And it doesn't change everything. I so change that to full size cross. Now we're on full cross. Let's go ahead this time. Let, whoops, undo. Redo. Let's change the color on that. Red. Or maybe do the whole thing in black. Okay. Now I want to go back to the magic wand. Let's use full cross and do the dark brown. Undo. Redo. Why does it keep doing that to me? Auto select. Let's do black. Okay, got off of it. Let's just switch to select. Auto digitize. And do the dark brown in there. And how about um, let's do black in here. Let's go light brown here. Let's go black. What happens if we do outline single? I ooh, don't like that, I don't think. Nope. It just outlined all the outlines. Undo. Let's picture back on. Go back to this. So outlining doesn't work super well with auto digitizing. And I think I did not change it. Full cross. Black. But let's undo that and let's change to the mini cross. And now select it. Okay. And that should be it. Well, let's see what it looks like. One to one. Hide the picture. Hide the grid. And there's my auto digitized boot and guitar. So those are your two options for auto digitizing. One more fun thing we can do in cross stitch. Um, you can only save in ARX format. However, you can open other formats into the software. File, open, and right now it just says Artista Cross Stitch, but if you do the drop down, it opens several other different file formats. Notice they are not art. There's PEZ and HUZ and so an EXP. So if we want to play with that. First, let's go over into the Bernina Embroidery software. And I'm going to get a new page. And now we need to open a design. Click on the open icon and start hunting for something you want to play with. Um, not all designs will look good with this, but it's very quick. So it's easy to play with it and see if you like it. Um, let's try animals. And just scroll through them. And it probably should be a filled design. So footprints would probably look good. Let's try the eyes. Open. Okay. Um, we could resize them here, but I think I will leave them as is. Well, maybe not. Let's resize. Okay, now file, save as, and it needs to be one of those formats that was in the list. And I remember that the Husqvarna Viking was one of them, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not saving it in this folder. I try to keep my sample folders with what was originally there, and that's just me. You can do whatever you want, but I'm going to put it in Software Club and save. Okay, I can now close this, switch back to the cross stitch, and just file, open, and 
It would be in my designs. You need to remember where you saved it. I did put it in Software Club, which is where it defaulted me to because I was testing this ahead of time. It's looking right now at all the ARX files. I know I saved it as Viking Husqvarna. I could say all files, but since I know it's a it's a Hus file, I'll do that. Click on it, say open. Okay. And there are my eyes now as cross stitch instead of a fill. Let's do one more just for kicks. File open. Um <coughs> Let's try seasons. Well, since Valentine's is coming next month as I write this, let's try this one. Open, file, save as. Again, I'm going to do the huzz and put it in my software folder save and I'm ready to go back into here well, new I guess we could have just opened and it's a Huzz file I believe it was that one that one's not quite as good I don't think it looks kind of like a bunch of red and pink blobs but that one's not bad if you like it, then save it. File, save as. I save. Now, let's go back and open it here. Open. Software Club. We know it's an ARX file, and rather than having to look at all of them, Open artistic view, and there it is. I wanted to add something to the cross stitch class this time since I have taught it before, and I think I figured out a way to line up the cross stitch design with the cross stitch canvas so that it looks pretty close to hand cross stitch. Um the first thing you need to do is figure out what count your canvas is and the stuff I had laying around was a 14 count so I opened my design which was a patriotic heart that's what we digitized earlier and I did settings fabric count 14 okay and now I need to save it a file save as and I have already done this. It's Patriotic Heart 14 count, so I know what I'm looking at when I go into the software. So save, and then you're ready to go into the Bernina software. Now I need to open it in the Bernina software. So file, open, and go find it. There's my 14 count one, open. And now what I want to do is put crosshairs in here to line up in the embroidery unit between the crosses. So I want to set up for that. Um, I want the outline single and go into object properties. I want to be able to take this out easily. So let's make it a 4.5 long. How about while we're here? No. Okay. I was going to turn the tie off off, but I'm not sure that it doesn't do it for the whole design and I don't want that. So. I'm going to switch the color to one that's not in the design already, so let's use the turquoise. And now I need to pick a line, any line, for my vertical um, reference mark. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, that's too much. I'm going to use the open object tool and just digitize a line, trying to line it up with one of the lines on the design and it doesn't have to be perfect at this point but now I'm ready to make it perfect so I'm going to zoom in on one end um, let's go ahead and turn the grid off so that it's not distracting us and click on the reshape reshape object icon 
And now I want to drag this so it looks like it's lined up pretty good. I have to go check the other end. Move the exit point out of the way. Enter. Put the exit point back. Let's check the top again. And that looks like it's lined up pretty well. So I need to see the whole thing. And now I need to do a reference point going horizontally. So again, the open object tool and digitize a line, enter, and zoom in again on the ends so that I can get it lined up. Clip, click on the reshape object icon, drag it till it looks good. Too far, move my exit point, enter, put the exit point back, enter. And double check the other end. It looks like it's lined up perfect now. Okay. Now I don't want that to be the last thing that stitches out because I'm trying to use it to line everything up before I start embroidering. So I will grab it and drag it to the top of my color film. Now if your color film wasn't showing, if it looked like that, then click on the color film icon and you don't want the individual objects, so keep clip clicking this icon until you get the squares. Okay, that's ready. So now we are ready to send it to the embroidery machine. If you are doing it directly from the computer with a cable, you can click on the Write to Machine icon and just send it. However, if you're using a USB drive, jump drive, thumb drive, whatever you want to call them, they're all the same thing. Then you need to save it as version 4 first. So file, save as, and choose version 4 from type of file and give it a name. Well, you have to find the drive where you're putting it, and I don't have one in the computer right now. But it would be like, it would say drive whatever. Send it there, and then say save. You have to do that because the machine cannot read pure version 5 files. If you're sending it directly from the computer, then the software converts it to what the machine needs to see. Now you need to hoop your canvas and you want to hoop it as straight as you can possibly get it. You may want to do registration marks and stuff on your um, stabilizer. You may want to use the plastic inserts that go in your hoops, whatever you need to get it straight. I didn't worry about it being perfectly straight because I embroider on a 200 and on that machine it is very easy to rotate or move a design a little bit once it's in the machine. Now, you're ready to stitch out those guides. You really don't have to do it with thread. I did it for my sample just so that you could see what I was doing but I sat and played with lining up the machine until the needle was coming down between the two um, threads in the canvas and I checked it and I ran it all the way through and I stitched it out so you could see it but if you do stitch it out then you want to tear that stitching out before you start sewing the design because you don't want to have to deal with it afterwards so once I was sure it was lined up about as good as I could get it on this one, then I went ahead and stitched the design. And here is a zoomed in picture of the design. And you can see it's lined up pretty well. It's not absolutely perfect, but you're also not looking at it usually in that big a size. Here is more of the actual size, and you have to look much harder to see that it's not lined up exactly in those holes. But it's really, really close, and if you want to spend more time with it, then you might get it even better. I hooped this and played with it and spent about 15 minutes on it, and that was it. So, have fun with the cross-stitch portion of the program. Play with it, and... Maybe you'll have some of those big 
charts that you bought a long time ago that you thought you would do that now you know you will never do by hand and maybe you'll actually do them by machine.